Welcome to iHnani.com. Computer Fundamentals Introduction to Computers Our intention is to make this tutorial useful and easy to understand by everyone, including even those people who have never touched a computer and also those who are computer literates. This is the second video of Computer Fundamentals, Part 1. In this video we shall go through the history of computers. In ancient times, tools that were used to help humans to calculate were called calculating machines and those humans who used the machines who were then called computers. The word computer was a job title, that was first used to refer a person who carried out calculations, or computations. From early 20th century onwards, the word began to take on its more familiar meaning, describing a machine that carries out computations instead of the person doing computations. Computer technology has undergone profound changes every decade since 1940s. Computing hardware has become a platform for uses other than mere computation, such as process automation, electronic communications equipment control, entertainment, education, etc. Each field in turn has enforced its own requirements on the hardware, which has evolved in response to those requirements. Electrical methods rapidly improved the speed and precision of calculating machines, at first, by providing motive power for mechanical calculating devices and later directly as the medium for representation of numbers. Numbers could be manipulated by linear electronic amplifiers and represented by voltages or currents. Or, numbers could be represented as discrete binary or decimal digits, and electrically controlled switches and combinational circuits could perform mathematical operations. The invention of electronic amplifiers made calculating machines much faster than their mechanical or electromechanical predecessors. Vacuum tube, or thermionic valve, amplifiers gave way to solid state transistors, and then rapidly to integrated circuits which continued to improve, placing millions of electrical switches, typically transistors on a single elaborately manufactured piece of semiconductor the size of a fingernail. By defeating the domination of numbers, integrated circuits made high-speed and low-cost digital computers a widespread commodity. Let us look at some of the changes that took place in computers over the years. Abacus the first actual calculating mechanism known to us is the abacus, which is thought to have been invented by the Babylonians sometime between 1000 BC and 500 BC, although some pundits are of the opinion that it was actually invented by the Chinese. The word abacus comes to us by way of Latin as a modification of the Greek word, abex. In turn, the Greeks may have adopted the Phoenician word, abuk, meaning sand, although some pundits say it was the Hebrew word, abhak, meaning dust. Regardless of the source, the original idea referred to a flat stone covered with sand, or dust, into which numeric symbols were drawn. The first abacus was almost certainly based on such a stone, with pebbles being placed on lines drawn in the sand. Over time, the stone was replaced by a wooden frame supporting thin sticks, intertwined hair, or leather cords, onto which clay beads or pebbles with holes were threaded. A variety of different types of abacus were developed, but the most popular became those based on the biquinary system, which utilizes a combination of two bases, base 2 and base 5, to represent decimal numbers. Although the abacus does not qualify as a mechanical calculator, it certainly stands proud as one of first mechanical device to calculation. Napier's Bones In the early 1600s, a Scottish mathematician, by name John Napier, invented a tool called Napier's Bones, 
which were multiplication tables inscribed on strips of wood or bone. This is how Napier's bones look like, with a table of seven printed on the bone. Napier published his version of rods in a work printed in Edinburgh, Scotland, at the end of 1617, entitled Rabdology. Using the multiplication tables embedded in the rods, multiplication can be reduced to addition operations and division to subtractions. More advanced use of the rods can even extract square roots. However, Napier's main achievement was the invention of logarithms. Napier's invention led directly to the slide rule, first built in England in 1632 and still in use in the 1960s by the NASA engineers of the Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo programs which landed men on the moon. Pascalin, Blaise Pascal, was a French mathematician, physicist, inventor, writer and Catholic philosopher. In 1642, in an effort to ease his father's endless, exhausting calculations, and recalculations, of taxes owed and paid, Pascal, not yet nineteen, constructed a mechanical calculator capable of addition and subtraction, called Pascal's calculator or the Pascalin. This is an early Pascal in on display at the Musée des Arts, at M. Thiers Museum in Paris. It was made up of counter wheels. This was capable of performing addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. The era of mechanical calculating machines started with the invention of the Pascalin. This picture shows a Pascalin opened up so you can observe the gears and cylinders which rotated to display the numerical result. The Musée des Arts at Tiers in Paris and the Zwinner Museum in Dresden, Germany, exhibit two of his original mechanical calculators. Though these machines are early forerunners to computer engineering, the calculator failed to be a great commercial success. Because it was extraordinarily expensive the Pascal in became little more than a toy, and status symbol, for the very rich both in France and throughout Europe. However, Pascal continued to make improvements to his design through the next decade and built 20 machines in total. The Jacquard Loom. In 1801, Joseph Marie Jacquard, a silk weaver, invented a textile loom, improving on the original bunched card design of Jacques de Vaucanson's loom of 1745. The Jacquard loom was the first machine to use punched card, which controlled the weaving, allowing automatic production of intricate woven patterns. In this picture, you can see a Jacquard loom showing the threads and the punched cards. Jacquard's creation not only helped the textile industry, but helped in the development of technology. The Jacquard loom not only cut back on the amount of human labor, but also allowed for patterns to now be stored on cards and to be utilized over and over again to achieve the same product. The idea behind the Jacquard loom was a system of punch cards and hooks. This picture shows a typical punched card with a design. The cards were made very thick and had rectangular holes punched in them. The hooks and needles used in weaving were guided by these holes in the cardboard. When the hooks came into contact with the card, they were held stationary unless it encountered one of the punched holes. Then, the hook was able to pass through the hole, with a needle inserting another thread, thus forming the desired pattern. Intricate patterns were achieved, by having many cards arranged, one after the other and or used repeatedly. If you would like to know the capability of his invention, check out this picture. In a brilliant demonstration of the power of his invention, Joseph Marie Jacquard, using 10,000 punch cards, programmed a loom to weave a portrait of himself in black and white silk.
This idea of punch cards was revolutionary, because, it used the idea of a machine having the ability to follow an algorithm. These punch cards were innovative because the cards had the capability to store information on them. This ability to store information was what helped spark the computer revolution. In this picture, you can see a fully functional loom in display. Jaguar's punch card system proved to be such a useful idea that it was incorporated into the ideas of many computer scientists that followed. One of them was adopted later by Charles Babbage about 1830 to control his analytical engine, and later by Herman Hollerith for tabulating the 1890 USA Census. Difference Engine, Charles Babbage was an English mathematician, philosopher, inventor, and mechanical engineer who originated the concept of a programmable computer. By 1822, he was proposing a steam-driven calculating machine the size of a room, which he called the difference engine, which would be able to compute tables of numbers, such as logarithm tables. He obtained government funding for this project due to the importance of numeric tables in ocean navigation. In this picture, you can see a small section of the type of machinery employed in Babbage's difference engine. By endorsing their commercial and military navies, the British government had managed to become the Earth's greatest empire. But in that time frame the British government was publishing a seven-volume set of navigation tables which came with a companion volume of corrections which showed that the set had over 1,000 numerical errors. It was hoped that Babbage's machine could eliminate errors in these types of tables. But construction of Babbage's difference engine proved exceedingly difficult and the project soon became the most expensive government-funded project up to that point in English history. Ten years later the device was still nowhere near complete, acrimony abounded between all involved, and funding dried up. The device was never finished. Parts of his uncompleted mechanisms are on display in the London Science Museum. In 1991, a perfectly functioning difference engine was constructed from Babbage's original plans. Build to tolerance is achievable in the 19th century. The success of the finished engine indicated that Babbage's machine would have worked. Nine years later, the Science Museum completed the printer Babbage had designed for the difference engine, an astonishingly complex device for the 19th century. In the picture, you can see a the London Science Museum's difference engine, built from Babbage's design. The design has the same precision on all columns. But when calculating converging polynomials, the precision on the higher order columns could be lower. Since the engine was never built during Babbage's lifetime, this is therefore considered the first one, the original. Charles Babbage is considered a father of the computer, and is credited with inventing the first mechanical computer that eventually led to more complex designs. Analytical Engine Babbage, was not discouraged by the outcome of his difference engine project. During this project he understood that a much more general design was possible. By 1834, he started to work on his next brainstorm, which he called the Analytic Engine, a general-purpose programmable computing engine. The input, programs and data was to be provided to the machine via punched cards. For output, the machine would have a printer, a curve plotter and a bell. The machine would also be able to punch numbers onto cards to be read in later. It employed ordinary base 10 fixed point arithmetic. This device, was as large as a house and was powered by six steam engines. Thanks to the punched car technology of Jacquard, it would be more general purpose in nature, since it was programmable. However it was Babbage who made a significant intellectual jump regarding the punched cards. In Jacquard loom, the presence or absence of each hole in the card, 
physically allowed a threat to pass or stop. But Babbage saw that the pattern of holes could be used to represent an abstract idea, such as, a problem statement or the raw data required for that problem's solution. Babbage saw that there was no requirement that the problem matter itself had to physically pass through these holes. Furthermore, Babbage realized that punched paper could be employed as a storage mechanism, holding computed numbers for future reference. This store, that is, a memory, was to be capable of holding 1,000 numbers of 50 decimal digits each. An arithmetical unit, the mill, would be able to perform all four arithmetic operations, plus comparisons and optionally square roots. Because of the connection to the Jacquard loom, Babbage called the two main parts of his analytic engine, the store, and the mill, as used in the weaving industry. The store, was where numbers are held, and the mill was where they were woven into new results. In a modern computer, these same parts are called the memory unit, and the central processing unit, known as CPU. Like the CPU in a modern computer, the mill would rely upon its own internal procedures, to be stored in the form of pegs, inserted into rotating drums called barrels, to carry out some of the more complex instructions the user's program might specify. The programming language, to be employed by users, was similar to modern-day assembly languages. Loops and conditional branching were possible, and so the language as conceived would have been Turing complete, long before Alan Turing's concept. Three different types of punch cards were used, one for arithmetical operations, one for numerical constants, and one for load and store operations, transferring numbers from the stored to the arithmetical unit or back. There were three separate readers for the three types of cards. In 1842, the Italian mathematician Luigi Manabria, whom Babbage had met while traveling in Italy, wrote a description of the engine in French. In 1843, the description was translated into English and extensively annotated by Ada Byron, Countess of Lovelace, who had become interested in the engine ten years earlier. In recognition of her additions to Manabria's paper, which included a way to calculate Bernoulli numbers using the machine, she has been described as the first computer programmer. The modern computer programming language Ada is named in her honor. Charles Babbage is considered a father of the computer, and is credited with inventing the first mechanical computer that eventually led to more complex designs. In this picture, you can see the an experimental model of the analytical engine, from 1871. Here you can see the punched cards used by the analytical engine. In this picture you can see a trial model of a part of the analytical engine, built by Babbage, as displayed at the Science Museum in London. In the next video, of Computer Fundamentals, I will start with Mark 1, which is considered to be the first programmable digital computer built.